This is what two milligrams of the drug fentanyl looks like. Two milligrams is enough to cause an adult to accidentally overdose. If you're taking this, you have no idea of knowing if this is gonna be the last time that you take that because it's that strong. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid that's fueling the opioid epidemic. It's 50 times more potent than heroin and 100 times more potent than morphine. But what makes fentanyl more dangerous than many other drugs is it can be manipulated to create new substances, substances that are more potent and deadly. Two or three times a month, uh, we will identify a new substance that had never been encountered before. The challenge is that the substances are changing so frequently that there aren't always reference materials available. In an undisclosed location in Virginia, forensic chemists at the Drug Enforcement Administration are tasked with identifying new drugs being found on the streets. For the first several years, it was a tremendous challenge. Mm -hmm. We were constantly uh, playing catch up and we referred to it as whack-a-mole. We would knock one down and one, you know, two more would pop up in its place. It's, it's not so much about staying ahead anymore, I would say. I think it's more about being aware of what the issue is. And now the issue is fentanyl and the various other drugs it can become. To the DEA, fentanyl is a class of drugs. Its core molecule can be manipulated to create deadlier substances like acetafentanyl, fernalfentanyl, and carfentanyl. That process is called synthesizing, and it's not an easy thing to do. The synthesis of these types of substances requires some sophistication and some knowledge of chemistry. The chemist would take a, a small portion and dissolve it right, in a, in a solvent to make something that looks like this. Um, so it has to be in a liquid form, and then we take that, that liquid and we analyze it by the instruments that you see here in this laboratory. Synthetic drugs are often made in small clandestine labs, making it cheaper for drug traffickers to produce. With synthetic opioids, traffickers don't have to worry about opium crops surviving like with heroin. These substances are also more potent, so traffickers don't need a lot of it to make a profit. So basically, if I had a, a pure uh, kilogram of fentanyl, what I want to do is I want to mix that with something else that would make it less potent. Thereby, instead of having one kilogram, I would probably produce five kilograms of it now. The only thing they know how to do is to mix it and to expand it so that they can make more money. They don't have any idea on if it's still lethal or, or how to even test that it's still lethal. And the danger is still passed on to the consumer. Patterson's point, consumers often don't know what drugs they're buying. One thing we do know, the problem is becoming more widespread. According to an emerging threat report from the DEA, officials are seizing heroin laced with fentanyl at a higher rate than ever before. But fentanyl isn't the only drug cut with heroin. The DEA lab has found samples of heroin mixed with carfentanil, a substance that is 100 times more potent than its counterpart fentanyl. Carfentanil is a veterinary tranquilizer and it's a tranquilizer that's used for very large animals like elephants. So you can see here, it's a very, very small quantity um, in the bottom of a vial. It's about 0.6 milligrams of carfentanil. This could likely be a fatal dose. As you can see from the samples that I've shown you here, they all look very similar. There's no way to visually determine what that substance is. It really requires analysis here in the laboratory to identify what substance is present. But some labs across the country don't have the resources or don't know they need to test for these synthetic drugs. For now, Head and the team of forensic chemists at the DEA continue to help smaller labs across the country identify unknown substances and by training other chemists how to do the testing. We've gotten a lot better at being able to predict what might be coming next. We've put more resources in place to be able to synthesize and make uh, reference materials to assist with the identification of unknown samples. And so we've gotten a lot um, faster and more proactive in combating uh, the challenge.